Hello, my name is Gabriel from Kavak USA. In this video, we're going to talk a little, a little bit about the story, uh, about uh, the processors, uh, how they work, what is the market, uh, what are the models, uh, and everything else. So if this is the first class, remember there is another class prior to this one. Uh, I'm talking how to become a computer technician and how to uh, give the uh, how to get the certification for CompTIA A+. A, A+. So now we are going to talk uh, about the processors. As you well know, there, is, there are two, two brands, Intel and AMD. So those are the major players, at least today, 2016. And there, are, there is another one that is called AR, ARM. The, the other one, ARM, is, uh, of course, is for uh, cell phones and tablets uh, and other things. But basically, now we are going to talk about this. Uh, later on, we are going to talk about the, the other brand uh, as well. So yeah, in the beginning, we are going to start with the story. So Intel start, started uh, around the 70s. So in, at, at that age, at that uh, year, they started, uh, they started uh, uh, producing CPUs and, and everything else, and a AMD as well. So in, in 1976, uh, IBM start, started uh, with their business about computers and everything else, and uh, they request to Intel, okay, we need the processors, please manufacture a few so we can buy it from, from you. Um, the thing is, uh, at that time, they they could make uh, more uh, CPUs, so they 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 were in back order. So they they needed some help. So they asked for help to AMD, and they started signing some agreement and, and everything else. And they start uh, producing uh, CPUs, so they can sell it to IBM uh, as well. So well, when the time uh, comes by, a few years later. They start saying, "Okay, AMD, yeah, you cannot start, you cannot make more CPUs the way that we we do it. You have to do your own." But they AMD say, "Here is the agreement. You see, you sign it, so we 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 have the rights to to make the processor. So the processor were exactly the same, or, or or very similar. At least the socket was was the same. So in the processor 486." DX2, I guess, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Uh, the sockets were, uh, until that point, all the, all the, the prior uh, CPUs were the same, so you can in, in interchange them and they will work just fine. And so at that point in 1995, they, AMD said to Intel, or Intel with AMD, they start talking and negotiating and say, well, you you go for your way and I'll go for my way because at that time Intel I mean few years later Intel became became very very big so they didn't need AMD for anymore for any help so uh, they they did everything for for themselves so that is a little of the story so in in this case here we have uh, Intel uh, we have uh, AMD, so we are going to explain you a little bit about the, the processor. So in this case, we have the desktop uh, processor. Uh, we have a Pentium, Celeron, a Core i3, uh, i5, and i7. That is, of course, for desktop computers. And here for server, we have a Xeon, that is for servers, basically. And here we have the lower, uh, the low power consumption is the Atom. So that is the crappy <laughs> CPU, so I don't recommend it for anything except, I don't know if it is very basic, but I saw a few computers with a, a Atom a processor and they are very slow with Windows 7 or Vista or something like that, I, I don't recommend it. So uh, besides that, we are going to talk about the, the market. So the market was for Intel and AMD, they have their different name and they were uh, aiming to different uh, people. So for students and professional, you have a core i7, i3, and i5. And in the case of AMD, you have the A, A series and the FX series. And the FX, so the FX is very good, usually it's very powerful, like the i7. And you have for the budget uh, desktop, so you have Pentium and Celeron. And in the case of uh, 
Intel, and usually still learn it for the enemy. I, I don't like that, that processor, but that is my opinion. Uh, and here on AMD, you have Sempron and Athlon. Usually, at least in my case, in my opinion, usually Sempron was a, a little bit better than Celeron, like I said before in another videos, I mean, maybe one year Intel is a little bit than AMD and maybe another day or another year, AMD is a little bit better than Intel, but they are uh, very alike. So I don't want to say, oh, well, 2016, Sempron is better than uh, Celeron because I mean, it may change. Uh, you you don't know the generation. It is something when I used to <laughs> play with these uh, CPUs. Um, the thing is, uh, for uh, portables or for notebooks, so you have uh, on mobiles, of course, so tablets, iPhones, and everything. Uh, you have a core uh, as, as well as the desktop, but it, this is a little bit different. They you, they consume less energy, so you have. The core i7, i3, i3, and i5, and then you have another model that is is lower in the spec. Is a core M and Atom as a, another uh, is the the other one that is very very bad, very slow. And in AMD side, you have the E series, and for servers you have Xeon uh, and you have the Optron. So those are the the options that you have, and then. We're going to talk a little bit about the past. So if you're very new, if you're 15 years old, and you're, you're saying, oh, I know Pentium, and I know Athlon, and they are very bad. Well, that was today. Maybe a few years ago, the, the thing was uh, totally different. So I am from that generation from Commodore 64, uh, XT, I mean the first, uh, one of the first chip uh, from Intel, 8088, so 286, 368, and all the things. So I, I saw almost everything. So in, at, that, at that time when you were saying Pentium, Pentium was, whoa! So it was top of the line. Um, Athlon was the same thing, so it was very good. Today, uh, not, that, not that good. So, they, like I said before, they were top of the line at that time. Today is a so-so processor, like I said before. So here we have the code names and generation because when you start talking with someone and you say, yeah, my processor is Core i7. Oh, really? And if you think that is, that's it, well, you're doomed. <laughs> so what you have to know is the generation because you, uh, Core i7 started around 2008. So you have the, the first chain is called uh, Nihalim. So that is the first one. And then you have many other ones like Ivy Bridge, uh, Haswell, Broadwell, and then Sky Lake is one of the latest one in 2016. And I, I know that there, are, there is another coming or there is a, another one already, but that is the, the idea. So when you start talking with someone, a customer, or you want to upgrade a computer or something like that, you have to know the generation that is, is very good, good. I mean, it's very necessary. You can call it by Shen or you can call it for the code names or whatever. So now we are going to talk about a desktop versus mo mobile. So usually uh, the processor, besides doing all the, uh, the math and everything else, crunching numbers, it produces heat, and then it uh, consumes power, and then you have the speed. So what, what does it mean? It means when you are using the computer all the way, 100%, you're going to have a lot of heat. If you use it, even if you don't use it that much, you're going to have heat anyway. So they, they created usually for mobile, so for desktop usually, uh, you have something called a throttling. So, when the CPU is, is checking the um, temperature and the consumption and everything uh, many, many times uh, by second, uh, per second. So that way, if you remove the heat sink or there is something, go I mean, something wrong on the computer, it, it will shut down by itself or it will reduce the, the speed. Let's say if you have a notebook and it's overheating or maybe a cell phone is overheating or something like that, uh, with this technology, will reduce the, the speed, so that way it will consume less uh, power and will produce less heat. So that is very uh, important and the speed will, low, will be lower, like I, like I said before. So if you are running the computer, 
notebook and you're thinking, well, the computer, the notebook says it was three gigahertz, but I'm, I'm looking at the task manager or some, some program that will tell you all the, um, the speed of, of the, the processor. You will see that it's running maybe 1.6 gigahertz and it's not three. So you're thinking, well, what's going on? Well, this is the technology usually is to, to have more, more autonomy on the, on the battery. So the battery will last longer and it will produce less heat and it will protect itself. Another little trick uh, that I was reading, I didn't test it yet, but uh, for some people who want like high performance and other things, I know that there are a few programs that allow you to keep the CPU, the, the gigahertz very high, so the speed to the, at the maximum and so that it will be disabled, so it will not uh, work. And that way you may have good performance, but you're going to risk the computer that it will last less. Um, so that is one of the things. Another thing that you can use uh, for this, there are some notebooks that you can say, okay, the throttle flame uh, have to be 50%. So that way, if you have some problem with the computer and you're thinking, well, it's overheating already, I don't want to take it apart or don't take it to the <laughs> technician or whatever, or maybe you just fix it and you say, well, but I fix it. I, I, I don't know if I did it the right way, I, but I still overheat or whatever. Is there, is an, is there is an option on Windows where you can do that. So you can lower the throttle flame, maybe 50%, and you know you're not going to get the maximum power of the CPU, but that way you're going to protect the computer and it will last longer. Usually it works for most of the notebooks, but if you do this on, in another notebook, it might not, it might not work. So you have to think about those things. So other than that, I, I cover this. I'm going to keep teaching you other functions of the CPU. And remember, if you want to see more classes, you can go to my site, gavagusa.com. Also, if you have a question, you can leave it on the comment. Uh, also, if you want to go to the forum as well, you, if you want to join the community. So I hope you have enjoyed. Remember, click, uh, click on like and subscribe and see you next class.